Hello everyone, welcome back to Scary Movies. This week we have a disappointing loss to the Jets, so we're going to rip the band-aid off, get right into it with some missed opportunities, uh, specifically incomplete passes to Gabe Davis. We're going to start off with this one with Gabriel Davis, right down here at the bottom of your screen. And even though we're kind of nitpicking, finding some flaws with this game or some reasons for the loss, I do want to also take a moment and recognize some of the positive things we see in the play uh, of Gabe Davis and others as we go through these clips. So first of all, the top of the route, we see the sharp comeback route. Davis turns around quickly. Another thing I like about this play, he not only has to beat the person who's originally on his assignment, but we have this defender coming in from the inside that he also needs to cut in front of to get a, even a chance at this ball. This is one where if the timing is not good, this is an easy interception. Davis makes it in time. And you've probably seen uh, multiple angles of this particular pass a bunch of times already. And yes, this is the one where the ball hits him right in the hands. Third and ten, this pass. If Klott would have moved the chains, as we can see from this still, he did beat both defenders. Hands on the ball, eyes looking forward, just a drop. Not sure exactly what happened there, uh, but I'm sure he's beating himself up over it way more than we can. Our next one was the interception from Sauce. And we're going to take a look at what happens here and maybe dive into a little more science than, uh, you know, maybe other people might. Uh, but, of course, if you've been following my stuff for the last few years, you know that's where I'm going to go from. What I want to do is stop right here. Now, it's at this point, you've probably seen this a million times as well. The expectation is that Gabe Davis is going to cut towards the inside. And instead, he cuts to the outside here. Now, if you've been reading any of my articles for the last few years, you may recall a piece that I did where I did analysis based off of the concept of how fast can a human being react to a visual stimulus. And in most people's cases, you are looking at a gap of about a quarter to one third of a second before you can see something happen and you can react to it. So in this case, with a timing pass in the NFL, you are truly looking at a person throwing off of the expectation of what they think is going to happen because the split second timing required for a lot of this really makes it impossible to react to what you're seeing. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this one in particular. At this point, Gabe Davis has not shown anything on which direction he's going to break. And I want you to focus on Josh Allen as I count the slides. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So at this point, we see Josh is starting to make some motions like he's about to react to this. And he's making his decision based off of what he thinks is going to happen. And it's only now that we see Gabe Davis cut into the outside. So realistically, I know we want to pin the blame on somebody here. It's possible this was called wrong or uh, there's a miscommunication in the huddle. But from a strictly timing standpoint, Allen really does not have time to change the throw based off of the difference in what he's seeing. Now, in the case of Gardner, his eyes are on Allen the entire time, and he has plenty of time to see that pass coming. And I don't really want to make you watch the entire return, so I won't. Now, this pass has been covered to death this is the one that closed the game out for the Buffalo Bills. If you want to take a look at why I personally believe this was a good no call, check the link in the description for my weekly penalty recap where I'll cover the rules and all the minutia of that uh, more in depth. But for this particular breakdown, what I want to focus on is one important aspect. This is not the easiest catch in the world. Gardner has fantastic coverage. He's making things about as difficult as possible, but here's where I want to pause. Davis does have both hands up. He's in obviously great position to make this catch. He's not contorting his body. He's not doing anything crazy. Are there easier catches? Absolutely. Have we seen him make harder catches? Also absolutely. Is it okay to be disappointed that he didn't come down with this one? Yeah. And again, nobody is more disappointed with this result probably than Gabe himself. 
I'm not a big fan of just nitpicking players, so I would like to end on a positive note. Earlier in that same drive, Davis did come down with an 18-yard catch uh, to help keep things going and give him at least a shot. So I did want to take a look at this one. And if you didn't catch this in ant mode, the sideline views make people really small. We have Davis up top here. Now the Jets are leaving some pretty decent sized zones open. The Buffalo Bills certainly recognize that. We have Allen on the move. Pressure is getting there. Now he does have some space with the line of scrimmage here still. He makes the throw. Davis has found a huge opening here. Makes the catch. Now at this point, you really have to go into problem solving and critical thinking mode, which is pretty difficult when you have this many potential large adults chasing you down to try to hurt you. But let's see what Gabe Davis does in this situation. What's great about this is he's trying to get as many yards as possible, but really it is a balance between you know, how, how much time you have on the clock versus how much distance you can get. At this point, there is really no decision other than the play is over and Davis gives himself up. Good critical thinking, good problem solving, and a very difficult position. So yeah, disappointing loss. Hopefully we'll do better next week. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, or follow through the link down below to check out more great content at buffalorumblings.com.